Hi guys, it's Satchel Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. I hope. I'm here today to talk to you about the latest release to come from Imaginary Authors. Big fan of this brand. It's been a little bit rocky for a while for me personally with a couple of the, the most recent releases, but this one has taken me by storm and I've been wearing it on and off for two weeks and every time I wear it, I just fall a little bit more in love with it. So this one's called Telegramma, and this one is a tale of serendipity. It's about two Argentinian lovers that are 19 years old that get separated for a reason that we don't know. The imaginary author's stories are always very loose and always leave things open at the end. And they continue to communicate through telegrams, I guess. Uh, and it's about the 60s, and then they randomly meet on a transatlantic flight and they're reunited and then the story ends very open like I said where their meeting could have global consequences which makes me think that the two people in this story could be based on real people I don't know the entire brand is about imaginary stories imaginary authors sometimes imaginary notes and um, yeah I want to tell you about it because this has become my second favourite Imaginary Authors fragrance after Cobra and the Canary. So, the brand describes this as a fougere. I'm not sure how much I agree with that. I don't think it's a fougere at all. Yes, it contains lavender, which is pretty much a staple note of the fougere recipe, but it doesn't feel like a fougere at all. It's actually very surprising. But let me tell you the notes first. So the note list is talc, talcum powder, lavender, I've got my phone here, sorry, black pepper, teak wood, amaris, vanilla, vanilla powder actually, and fresh linens. That is the short, succinct note list that you always get from imaginary authors. They never do an elaborate note list. It's just this, 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 and this, and make of it what you will. So this is all about softness for the main part, but I'm gonna spray it on my hand again. This has a very surprising opening. It's nothing like I expected, and when I first tried it, it was not an instant love. It took me a couple of wearings to get to where I am now, which is major love, but the opening is very unexpected. So, the opening is lavender. You can smell it there. But I will say that if I didn't know lavender was in this, I would never have immediately picked that out as a note because what's much more apparent is it's, it's an almost gourmand fragrance in the beginning. It feels like a burnt, sugary, woody type smell. Somebody that I met recently uh, actually hit the nail on the head with the way that this smells when it opens and they said it smelled like spilled coffee. If you ever get a a pure coffee granule on your fingers and then it kind of dries or if you've spilled coffee and you're cleaning it up it's kind of got something like that about it but I would say it's also kind of like a caramelized lavender so it's almost gourmand it's almost smoky and not what you would expect from something that contains notes like linen and powder and talc and pepper it smells completely different to any of that I want to talk about teak. I have never smelled teak on its own. I'm pretty sure it's kind of a dark wood, but my research tells me that teak is somewhere in the realm of like a tamed cedar wood. It has a bit of soapiness, which kind of fits the theme a little bit, I think. But there's a definite dark woody element to this. It's almost like a scratched, scratchy, rough type of woody uh, nuance or smell that comes out of this and it's sitting in a herbal lavender with this powdery nuance that is waiting to completely burst forth and it really, really does in a big way. I also wanna quickly talk about amaris. So amaris is a tricky one because amaris, although it's a kind of floral shrub, it's actually a woody nuance or, a, or gives a woody nuance to a fragrance. Some people say that perfumers use amaris in place of sandalwood. Some people say they couldn't be further apart. I've read interviews before, or a interview actually, uh, an interview with Pierre Guillaume who used amaris in place of sandalwood in a fragrance. Some people say 
they're not even the same, so it's just open for discussion. The perfume world is a big, crazy, complex world. It's also used in soap quite a lot, which I think very nicely ties into the theme of this fragrance as well, so essentially it's a light, woody element with a soapy quality that fits this perfume perfectly. So once the opening happens, the opening is very quick. This fragrance to me has two distinct stages. The opening part with this burnt lavender caramel, weirdly coffee type gourmand thing happening. And then it's probably about 10 minutes on me that you get to the main feeling of how this is gonna go and where it's gonna end, because it doesn't change too much after that. And I'm really happy because the drying and dry down stages of this are Wicked. So when you get to the dry stages of this, this is where it becomes all about the powder. And this fragrance, I, I feel the same way about it as I do about Habanita by Molinard. It's kind of in the realm of baby powder for grown-ups. So it's not a dainty, ethereal type powder fragrance. There's enough bite and a slight touch of darkness from what I'm thinking is teak, but it's a powerful powdery fragrance, it's not a close to the skin powdery fragrance, and I've always said in my reviews, I love it when a powdery fragrance packs a punch, and this one does. You have this talcum powder, almost soapy linen type feeling, but it's got the signature thing that runs through pretty much every imaginary author's fragrance, which is a dusky, woody dryness. This is why I wasn't a fan of the prior release, Sun Drunk. I think it smells nice, but it didn't feel like imaginary authors, and I thought they were going off of the rails and going down some different path, and I thought, no, but it's fine. They're back. I really love the way it develops. I like powdery fragrances that have a slight twist, or a different element, or a bit of an edge and this one does that. What's unusual actually, just as a side note, is that the liquid is kind of green green in colour. It's kind of like an olive green perfume liquid, which is unusual. But yeah, this one wafts really nicely. It makes you feel a little bit clean without being too frou-frou. It's not that powder puff type powderiness. Like I said, it's got a bit of an edge and there's a touch of darkness behind and it's got weight and I really like that, I think it's a great one. Cobra and Canary is my current favourite of Imaginary Authors, and this one has gone to my second favourite, totally unexpectedly, since when I first smelled it, and I just said, oh, I, I don't know if I can deal with that. This one really needs time. Don't let the first impression sway you. Give it time to dry down, and you will see that this is comforting in a weird way. It's a little bit, Baby powder for grown-ups. I'm going to leave it there. Longevity on me is really good. Um, there's been times, because I've worn this so many times over the last two weeks, I've been kind of fascinated by it and wearing it a lot. There's been a lot of times where I haven't smelled it anymore, but I did wear it to work recently, and a colleague of mine actually said, oh, what are you wearing today? You smell great. And this is in a perfume shop with so many other things. She could smell it on me, and this was at about five o'clock, and I'd sprayed it on at nine o'clock, so... There's great longevity here for me personally. As always, try it on your skin. You never know what's going to happen. But for me, this has gone onto my wish list. I want to add this to my collection this year, along with Cobra and the Canary, because I still don't have it. Anyway, guys, that's my review of Telegramma by Imaginary Authors, the brand new one to come from Josh Meyer. I'm Alps Mamano, trying to make the world smell better, one video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.